What is going on YouTube? I am Lamont at Large and today we are at the Oak Bluff Memorial Park Cemetery. Got a little bit of a wind warning for you. If you don't like the wind, I don't know what to tell you. I have about a thousand other videos on my channel. I know some people out there don't appreciate the wind. However, all my videos are outside and there's nothing that I can do about it until I learn how to control the weather through time and space through some form of mysticism. It simply is going to be what it is. So without further ado, let's get right into the video and we're going to visit some graves here at this uh, cemetery. So follow me. It would definitely be a crying shame if I came to this cemetery and didn't show you the grave and pay my respects to one Tex Ritter. If you don't know who Tex Ritter was, then you were not a little boy or a little girl growing up in the 1930s and the 1940s. Uh, this guy was a very, very well-known and famous cowboy actor in those times throughout the 30s, 40s and 50s and 60s. Uh, if you watched a Western uh, and you were into that uh, culture, if you will, you definitely have seen his uh, movies or TV appearances and you probably listened to a song or two from him. Uh, he was born out here in Texas in 1905. Uh, originally, he was going to school to become a lawyer and he said, yeah, yeah I'm just going to go ahead and be an actor. And he made the uh, right career choice that is for sure uh, this guy has been over 70 uh, movies uh, many many tv appearances like i said and uh, here's a fun fact uh, when capitol records first uh, started he was the first artist to sign with them so a little bit of uh fun history for you and uh had a little bit of a taste for politics if you will uh, he ran for senate uh, in Tennessee in 1970, uh, lost that race, uh, even though he did run basically on his name of being well-known and famous or what have you. And uh, that last name Ritter, you might know that name because he is the father of famed TV comedian actor extraordinaire. You know who I'm talking about, and I'm talking about John Ritter course um, from three's company fame and uh, this is his grave right here now woodward maurice that is his name woodward maurice ritter but nicknames tex uh, a very 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 famous actor uh he might have been in the top two or three uh famous cowboy kind of western type uh, actors on TV right you know when it was coming about and uh, he sadly passed away of a heart attack 10 days before his 69th birthday so uh, definitely a, a, a grave I wanted to visit and you know hey I want to show you guys out there that uh, you know John Ritter well you know the, his father was just as famous as he was in his time so rest in peace the Tex Ritter. Sarah Jane Block, August 4th, 1884 to June 12th, 1983. I will keep it night and day. I always wonder when I see these on stones, these sayings, I always wonder what it meant. Maybe a saying that she would often say. Two families are remembering their loved ones who were killed in tragic crashes in Bridge City three years ago. Jillian Blanchard and Robert Jackson were both killed by the same intoxicated driver. 12 News anchor Brenda Matuti shares how their families are honoring them years later. The call no parent or loved one wants to receive. On June 13th, 2020, Jillian Blanchard and Robert Jackson were killed when Jared Lee Watkins got behind the wheel after a night of drinking. We look outside our front window and, and see cops in, our, in the street walk outside to see what's going on. And as cops walked down my driveway and, and proceeded to tell me and my wife that my daughter had been killed by a drunk driver. Robert was riding his bicycle down Ferry Drive in Bridge City when Watkins ran him over, 
killing him instantly. But he kept driving, and six miles away, Watkins crashed head-on into Jillian's car. 12 News spoke with Jillian's father, Jacob Blanchard, about the moment he received that heartbreaking call. It's absolutely devastating. Um, it, it doesn't feel real. It feels like you're in a nightmare. Three years later, the family continues to honor Jillian's memory. She has her own bench at Port Nature's Riverfront Park, and the family has created acts of kindness cards. I get up in front of a group of, of convicted drunk drivers and we tell our story in hopes that another family doesn't have to go through the tragedies because of the heartbreak that this brings is just, it's unbearable sometimes. In Orange, Robert's wife Mandy says she's still coping with the loss. She says the hardest part is what came after Robert's death, or rather, what didn't come. The accident with Robert that took his life isn't what was so hard. It was what came after, you know, every day for two and a half years. That's how long it took for justice to be served. In 2022, Watkins finally pleaded guilty to three charges and was sentenced to 40 years in prison. But for the victim's families, those years cannot compare to a lifetime without Robert and Jillian. That scumbag killed two people in one night. Two people in two separate accidents in one night. Well, the public will not have to worry about that man for the next 40 years. He died a day before his 32nd birthday. There was a man who was being chased by the Beaumont Police Department named John Wesley Nero, who was wanted for assaulting his own mother. That's definitely a man that you want off the streets. So Officer Brian Hebert was part of the chase, probably broke off of the chase, and he went a few miles more than likely on the highway ahead of them to lay out some spike strips. As he pulled over his car to pop the trunk to get the spike strips out, that clown intentionally mowed him down. He smacked right into the back of his police car. I wanna say in a sense, he probably was dead on impact. Can you imagine being hit by a car doing 70, 80 miles an hour like that? I, I can't even imagine the, the sickening thud that was probably heard as he intentionally did that. That was not an accident. Uh, this is Officer Hebert's grave right here. The man that killed him more than likely probably should have got the death penalty, but uh, I guess he was uh, smart enough to take the first deal they gave him, which was a life in prison without the possibility of parole.
woman convicted in the death of a young girl is going back to prison to serve more time for a collision that also killed the girl's sister. 26-year-old Amanda Jean Lewis pled guilty this morning to her second charge of intoxication manslaughter. A judge in Orange County sentenced Lewis to an additional eight years behind bars to go along with the eight she is already serving. Six News anchor Ashley Gaston covered the trial and reports it was an emotional day for everyone involved. Most of these people walking out of an Orange County courtroom Wednesday have endured two trials, centering on the deaths of two sisters. Amanda Jean Lewis walked out of court in handcuffs in a prison jumpsuit, sentenced to an additional eight years behind bars for the death of Kristen Grubbs. It says it on the bottle. Do not drive if you take certain medications. She decided to do that. Personally, we think she should have gotten more time. Ruby Calvert was Kristen Grubbs' softball coach. She's one of dozens of people who came to support Kristen's parents at the trial. We understand it's her first defense, but that doesn't bring Kristen and Katie back. Lewis pled guilty Wednesday to intoxication manslaughter for Kristen's death. Kristen was 12 when she was killed. In November, an Orange County jury convicted Lewis for the death of Katie Grubbs. Katie was 11 when she died. The children were riding home with their father in November of 2010 when Lewis crashed into their car on FM 105 just north of Vider. State troopers say Lewis was high on prescription medications at the time of the accident. Amanda made this choice. Amanda did this. Kathy Sheck Snyder has worked with Mothers Against Drunk Driving for more than 20 years. She says this is one of the most devastating cases she's been part of. She has trouble comforting the parents of the two young girls. Uh, Sandy and Grant, I just can't imagine meeting them. I tell people all the time they are my worst nightmare. And Sheck Snyder hopes Amanda Jean Lewis never forgets what she did while Lewis prepares to go back to her jail cell to serve a 16-year sentence. In Orange County, Ashley Gaston, KFTM 6 News. The woman who killed these two kids, Amanda Jean Lewis, had the nerve, had the absolute nerve. You know, a lot of people have the nerve nowadays to ask the judge for probation. What gall? I mean, I guess you might as well ask, right? Well, she is still in prison. She goes up for parole this coming May. I don't know if the parole probation department is going to grant her the release. Worst case scenario, she will definitely clean up all of her time and be out of prison in 2027. Kill these two little girls, ruin their parents' lives, threw her life away because she wants to pop prescription pills and be an idiot. Bubba, you may be gone from this earth, but you will never be forgotten. You will be waiting for each of us when we cross the river of life, your loving family and friends. While hearts are hurting in Nederland, the community is mourning one of their own. 17-year-old Hunter Gidry died this week after battling a rare form of brain cancer. For 10 months, the community rallied around him as he fought a brave battle. Now his family and friends are preparing to say goodbye, and they're reflecting on his legacy. Here's 12 News reporter Dominique Lay. We'll all miss him a lot. It's going to be really hard, but I know he doesn't have any more pain. Fighting back tears, Karen Bauer's heart is heavy. She lost her boyfriend Wednesday. Hunter Gibdry bravely fought glioblastoma, an incurable brain cancer. And Karen was with him in those final moments of that fight. I'm gonna miss his personality. I'm gonna miss having someone to talk to about anything and everything. Um, I'm just gonna miss his voice. Yeah. A voice that was filled with kindness. Family friend Carrie Hackbarth says Hunter was witty and caring, and it was his one-of-a-kind personality that drew her son to become Hunter's best friend. Him and my son would make these hilarious videos, and um, Hunter would come to my house and like eat all the snacks and blame it on Carter. And uh, 
Um, I knew if Hunter was coming over, I had to have breakfast bowls in my freezer because, you know, that during the night, he'd eat about three of them. When Hunter got sick, the community came together, strangers and business owners rallying around him to show their support. Vanessa Broussard, an owner of Zaza's Boutique, was one of the small business owners to help raise money to help Hunter fight his cancer. The entire community prayed for the best outcome against this monstrous, aggressive form of cancer. Although this is not the outcome we had hoped for, we know Hunter is in a better place. Our thoughts and prayers continue for Hunter's family and friends. Barth says in those final moments, she will never forget the love that was in the room. It was heartbreaking and beautiful at the same time because... He isn't suffering anymore. He fought really hard till the end. I mean, he fought till the end. I think sometimes as people, we truly don't understand fully when we say life's not fair. I think a lot of times we take saying that for granted. You want to talk about what's not fair. This is Officer Lisa Renee Legata Bulo, March 6, 1971 to April 27, 2007. I apologize if I said the last name incorrectly. There's a couple variations of how to properly pronounce that name. Only 26 years of age. On April 27, 2007, she was on the side of a freeway. I'm not 100% sure if she had somebody uh, pulled over or something along those lines. Maybe she was directing traffic over a previous accident but a drunk driver ran right into her and Knocked her over the freeway onto the bottom below of a service road My god And uh, Just a stupid knucklehead Another DUI driver. And uh, the man responsible for that uh, ended up doing 11 years in prison. So he's out now. new details about what Port Arthur police believe was a murder-suicide. Chief Mark Blanton says the early part of their investigation indicates 46-year-old Jimmy Jenkinson shot his 44-year-old wife, Angel, in the head and then shot himself in the chest. A family friend found the bodies Saturday in their home in Port Arthur. Today, Fox 4's Haley Bull spoke with family members still in shock. She was gorgeous. She was so, so precious to us. Shannon Castillo is remembering her sister. She lived for her boys. That was her whole entire life. She was like my best friend. And like, I told her everything. She told me everything. Jacob says that included the good and the bad. They loved each other. It's just they weren't good together. The couple married in September of 2012. They had like gotten in fights before. And she like, they haven't been in like last February, February 10th. Uh, he almost killed her, and I, I'm the one that had to call the cops. And uh, I, 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 she always said, like, I saved her, I rescued her. And so I knew that maybe one day if she didn't get out, it would happen. Jimmy Jenkinson's 16-year-old daughter, Chloe, wanted us to read part of a letter she'll share at her father's funeral. The tears I cry will always be tears of joy because we always had so many precious memories together. I know in your eyes, I will always be your little girl. Today, I stand in front of everyone and have no regrets as far as my father is concerned. And I will love him for the rest of my life. I know he is at peace. A daughter remembering her father. A son knowing his mother's words that create memories are silent. I'll never hear her say I love you again. 
like when everyone was texting me that they were they love me and I just knew that they can tell me that but she can't tell me that again I won't get to hear her say anything for like a, a long time Her father died three months after his daughter was murdered. Shane was riding on an ATV with a couple of his other friends. So one was driving, he was in the middle and then somebody else was on the back. And they were riding in an area and they hit a fence and there was some kind of a post uh, with wire and they all crashed and uh, Shane died from that ATV accident, uh, some kind of neck injury. Live, but not live, but still alive by the grace of God. I am Lamont at large. I'll see you on the next video. Have a good day, y'all. Peace out.